Hey guys, welcome to the Health Babes podcast. I am Dr. Becky Campbell with Dr. Crystal Hone. Today we have Dr. Trevor Cates on. She's amazing. She is the founder of the spadoctor.com and she's really an expert on skincare. She has her own skincare line. She has two books out and an online program. We talk all about hormones and how they affect the skin, how the gut microbiome affects the skin, how diet affects the skin, so many different things, how she feels about SPF, how the seasons can affect our skin. So we cannot wait for you to listen to this episode. So thank you so much for coming on. We're so excited to have you. We've been checking out your new skin care line, and we're super excited to talk about that and all of your things, your book, your program and everything. So before we get into all that, I really would love to know, like, how did you get into this? So, you know, what is your journey with your own skin? Yeah. So when I was, thank you. I, when I was a kid, I had a lot of health challenges and a lot of allergies and they showed up as a lot of different rashes, itchy rashes, eczema, hives. And my parents took me to see a lot of different specialists and every medication they put me on or gave me topically, I had an adverse reaction or an allergic reaction to. So I just kept feeling miserable and and, you know, if you've ever struggled with skin issues, not only is it, can it be physically uncomfortable, but it can be embarrassing as well. And I remember that as a kid being really embarrassed by my skin, but thankfully my parents didn't give up looking for answers and they eventually found a holistic practice practitioner that they took me to. And it was the one thing that really turned my health around my skin around. And I remember at that young age thinking, why did I have to go through all of this to find a holistic approach? Why didn't the doctors mention this right from the beginning as one of our options? And so it just, for me as a kid, I, it just planted a seed really early on in my head. And then later on in life, when I was at college, I learned about naturopathic medicine and naturopathic medical school and thought, okay, this, this is very much aligned with what I've always believed since childhood. Childhood. And so that's what put me on the path to become a naturopathic doctor. And then, and I've been practicing, I've been a naturopathic doctor for 22 years, but it was really about 10 years ago when I was working in the Walter Fastoria spa and I, I was doing a two week weight loss program for my patients. And at the end of the two weeks, they would say, Dr. Cates, I feel great. I lost all this weight, but what surprises me is my skin. Yeah. I didn't know my skin could look this good. And to me, I was like, well, you know, that makes sense because you, your skin is your largest organ and, 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 but, and it's right on the surface of your body. It gives you great clues on the outside, but I realized that it was intuitive to me because it was my own journey. It was my own path. And I'd already discovered that myself but that so many people didn't look at skin that way, that they were going to dermatologists or estheticians that would just say, well, here, use this topical, or let's cover it up with this makeup or, you know, like and not really getting to the underlying cause of what's going on with skin issues. And so that's what led me to write my first book, Clean Skin from Within. And then also what led me to create the Spa Doctor skincare line because my patients were asking about natural skincare products, but they weren't happy with the results they were getting from them and, or that they were worried that they weren't truly natural. Right. And so that, that I created the Spa Doctor skincare line. And now I have my second book out, which is super exciting, Natural Beauty Reset. And I wanted to do that one because I get so many questions about hormones. Yes. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I had to write this book and then also a seasonal approach, which I didn't include in the last book. Okay. So yes. we're talking about, you know, some of you, you mentioned root drivers, right. Of the, what could be causing a lot of these skin conditions and you mentioned hormones. So can we get into a, that a little bit, which, which hormones are big drivers, you know, you know, imbalances that we see with skin issues. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of times when we say hormones, people think about sex hormones, right. which definitely those play a big role in skin, you know, like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and certainly during certain times in our lives, especially puberty, when there are surges of hormones and changes and fluctuations, there can be issues like acne breakouts. Um, but that's not the only time that we can see these 
uh, imbalances and hormones, right? And even acne, that a lot of times women perimenopausal will start when their hormones are fluctuating, they'll start to see more acne breakouts. Um, and then also women experiencing um, imbalances throughout their cycles and things, they can yeah. notice changes in their skin. Um, and then also like when women, uh, certain women, when they, when they get pregnant, they're on birth control pills, they might experience hyperpigmentation or melasma. And um, so those are some of some of the sex hormone related, uh, along with aging. When we, yeah. as we get older and our hormones change, that gosh darn it, <laughs> gosh, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, so the, that can definitely create changes in our um, our skin with you know premature aging, wrinkle, sagging skin, unfortunately, and. Um, and so also, but that their thyroid, there's, you know, our thyroid hormones play a role in our skin too. One of the early warning signs of thyroid, like low thyroid function is dry skin. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our skin gives us so many messages and what's great about it is it's right on the surface of our body. So we don't need to use like x-rays and CT scans and things like that. We could just look in the mirror and get so much information about our skin. Yeah. yeah. And, um, the gut, the, the liver too, right. We always tell our patients, like if your liver isn't doing its job properly, your body's going to use your skin mm -hmm. to try to get the toxins out too. So with a lot mm -hmm. of people, when they change their diet and reduce inflammation and start supporting, you know, their detox pathways, even just that they notice a, a, a big change with their skin. Do you see that too? Yes. Yes. And you know, our, our skin is a pathway of detoxification yeah. and and so I, you know, it, I guess people just forget that it's just yeah. an amazing organ yeah. that we have and it's our largest organ. Right. And also one of the biggest things with the skin is, is it, it, one of its big functions is to provide a barrier and protect us from the outside world. So it has all these microorganisms that live in it. You know, it's got its own microbiota, mi microorganisms, and then it also has certain oils in the skin. It has a pH that's specific for the skin and all of these things help protect our skin. But so often we're doing things to our skin that break down that barrier function on the outside. Um, but also a lot of the things like you're talking about, you know, liver function and the things that we do on the inside can impact that barrier function too. So our gut microbiome, our gut health is so important for our skin health. Yeah. yeah. And I was going to just ask you about that. So you know, by now, I feel like if you're listening to podcasts like, like this and you don't know a little bit about the gut, you're probably living under a rock, you know, <laughs> that's what we talk about all the time, right? We're relating yes. all, so many things to the gut. So can you get a little bit more in depth about, you know, the relationship between the gut, you know, skin, all that mm -hmm. connection? Yeah, absolutely. So our, our gut health, there is this gut skin connection. And as the nature, naturopathic physicians have been talking about this for a really long time, but it's been interesting to see a lot of research, more research coming out about the gut um, brain skin access, the gut skin connection and in, you know, the gut hormone connection. And so we have all these microorganisms that live in our gut that help protect it. And we, it helps us with our digestion, but it also helps us with our skin, our brain, our hormone, all these other things, because it's not just isolated to this one particular area and it impacts our entire body. And then also th there's, you know, something called leaky gut where our, our gut digestive tract lining become, can become more permeable than it should. And so then what happens is an, an inflammatory reaction to that. And that, so that can impact the skin and the skin's microbiome. And there's also something called leaky skin. A lot of people have heard about leaky gut, but they may not have heard about leaky skin. So, and it's a very similar concept um, is where our skin, you know, again, it has this barrier function to it, but it can start to break down. And so it becomes more permeable. It becomes more reactive, more inflamed. So we see this a lot in people with chronic skin issues like yeah. eczema or acne. 
And so what we want to do is we want to build that back up. We want to build back up our gut function, our, you know, our gut microbiome, our, the, the digestive tract lining, as well as our skin barrier. Yeah. 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 And with the gut too, we see so many nutrient deficiencies too, you know, when patients are dealing with leaky gut and they're not breaking down their foods properly. Right. And, and even infections in the gut can really come out in the skin and increase histamine. So, so we really got to get to the bottom of a lot of that when we're working on skin. Um, what about foods? Like if, if patients are hearing and thinking about, you know, I should, should I be eating dairy or gluten? Can you kind of go into that and how that can impact skin? Yeah, I talk a lot about that in my first book, Clean Skin from Within, of uh, some of the top trigger foods for for um, skin issues. And there are certainly patterns that I've seen in my patients over the years of certain foods that are common triggers. And some of them probably won't surprise you, but some of them I know will surprise a lot of people. So an example is sugar. Sugar is a big trigger food for, for skin issues. And I think a lot of times people don't think of sugar as an issue, unless they're trying to lose weight. Like, I think it's really yeah. interesting that, yeah. oh, I'm not trying to lose weight so I can eat sugar, you know, <laughs> but they don't, they don't really realize that sugar contributes to so many issues in the body. And so in the case of skin, what can happen is when we eat a lot of sugar or foods that turn to sugar in the body and cause the blood sugar to increase when that blood sugar increases, insulin increases and with increased insulin, we get um, excess sebum production in the skin, excess androgen activity. And these are the things that are known to trigger acne breakouts. So this is this is a particular thing for people who have acne prone skin, particularly important to have good blood sugar balance. And then also it's related, sugar is related to glycation issues. So what, what happens is it, glycation really speeds up the aging process. So glucose, we have too much of it. It can bind to proteins in the body. And in the case of skin, binds to collagen. And so then it makes collagen more rigid, less elastic, which leads to wrinkles, sagging skin. And so, you know, while... While wrinkles are a normal part, a, a natural part of the aging process, we don't want them before it's our time, right? We, we don't. don't. <laughs> we, we want don't. that graceful <laughs> aging, right? <laughs> so glycation issues, glucose, blood sugar, um, it can be a big contributing factor to a premature aging. Yeah. Yeah. What about dairy? Can you talk a yeah. little bit about dairy with, especially with acne? I see this often in practice. Yeah, sugar, um, dairy is an, another big one, and for for a lot of skin issues, a big trigger, partly because it's it tends to be more pro-inflammatory. It's a common um, intolerance or allergen, and and so I definitely see that. Gluten is another big one that is a common reactive food for people, dairy, gluten, and but also with some that surprise people are eggs and yeah. corn. Yeah, eggs are a big one, especially for people with acne prone skin. And now I'm not saying that these foods are a problem Bad. for everyone, right. but sugar typically is a problem for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> Some people are just more sensitive to it than others, but, um, but certainly these are ones that are good to take out of your diet for a period of time. And then the way I recommend it in my book is to avoid it for two weeks and then gradually reintroduce them back in if you want to. Some people find after they've taken them out, they feel so much better and their skin is so much better. They don't even want and they don't miss it. So <laughs> they just sad. don't bring those foods back in. But um, yeah, I think that's a really good point about, you know, maybe wanting to bring them back in, but maybe not. You know, I think when people do an elimination diet, they're really quick to be like, okay, when can I put these foods back in? Yeah. But some of the foods like gluten, in my opinion, and sugar, I don't find it necessary to bring those back in. There really isn't any good purpose. Like there's no nutrient, you know, that you're missing if you're not eating those foods but maybe eggs, you know, since they are full of nutrients that can be helpful, maybe those are something you might want to add back in at the appropriate time. So I love how you said like that two week period, but you know, if you feel like you need to bring that food back in, maybe not all of those foods, right? 
Yeah, I know a lot of times people will say, yeah, no, gluten is not a problem for me. I tried going without it for a couple of days and and it didn't make any change. <laughs> but a couple of days is just not enough. And to really get an understanding of how your body is without a food, you really have to at least 10 days, but two weeks is more ideal. And to be um, as as strict with it as possible that you can, because even small amounts that unfortunately things like gluten and corn and soy are in so many of our foods and dairy and yeah. sugar. I mean, these, these are, that's part of why we have such a common sensitivity to these foods is because our body never gets a break from them. And so, yeah. especially if you have something like leaky gut and you're already going to be more reactive to to things, your body is just constantly trying to see is, is something foreign or is it a friend? Okay. So we hear about like clean skincare products and toxins in our skincare. So can you kind of dive into that a little bit? Like how are toxins or chemicals in our skincare a problem for our hormones? Yeah. So we get exposed to so many toxins and our skincare products. And I think a lot of people don't realize how much you can absorb through your skin, but yet a lot of women use hormone creams or people use nicotine patches. It's, it's a way to give, give um, someone medication is through the skin. So we can actually absorb ingredients that we put onto the skin. And unfortunately the United States FDA doesn't regulate the this industry very well. And we, they've only banned about 11 ingredients in skincare products and personal care products. While in Europe, they've banned 1300 ingredients wow. in personal care products. So it it's really up to us to understand what might, might be in our skincare products and to not just mindlessly put them on. And, and also another big thing to know is just because it says natural mm -hmm. or hypoallergenic on the label does not mean anything. It's our just marketing. a marketing claim. Our yeah. marketing. <laughs> and so it's really disturbing as a naturopathic physician and a skincare manufacturer, it's really scary to see the lack of regulation in this industry and how much marketing hype is put into this. And now people are really interested in natural skincare products. And so big companies know that, or a lot of companies know that. So they'll just put like, you know, CoQ10 in their yeah. product and mm -hmm. then put natural on it. They have a little bit of paraben, you know, <laughs> just. <laughs> yeah. And so, and, and then, you know, I think, I think a lot of people also don't realize how many products they're using. Yeah. On average, we use nine personal care products a day, and that's both men and women. Women typically use more, and that exposes us to 126 unique ingredients. That's according wow. to the Environmental Working Group. And again, but that the thing is, is that a lot of these are not um, particularly safe for us. One of the big group of chemicals I'm most concerned about are endocrine disrupting chemicals. Endocrine disrupting chemicals are uh, create hormone disruption disrupting effects in the body. And you can, we find endocrine disrupting chemicals in our air and our water, our food, personal care products. But the problem is, is these chemicals will bind to hormone receptors in the body and can act like hormones. They can make the body, um, you know, just changing the function of the receptors. And so it's been, they've been linked to a number of different hormone related issues, thyroid disease, infertility, early puberty, prostate cancer, a lot of different things that um, really anything related to hormones can possibly be um, impacted by this group of chemicals. So the more we can do to reduce our exposure, the better. It's not like all doom and gloom. Um, there are things we can reduce do to reduce them. And you want to focus on the areas where you have the most control and what you eat, what you bring in your home, what you put on your body, the personal care products you use are place, you know, the biggest things that you can focus to avoid these endocrine disrupting chemicals as much as possible. It's, it's really impossible to avoid them all, but yeah. at least we can reduce our total load and our bodies are really amazingly able to eliminate a lot of the toxins we're exposed to. But the thing is that I'm most concerned about are the 
the products that we use on a day-to-day basis? Yeah. What are the things that you're exposed to on an ongoing basis where your body never gets a break from them? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. What are some of the top, you know, like ingredients people should avoid in products? Yeah. So fragrance is yeah. one of the top ones and fragrance is in so many different products and yeah. not just our personal care products, but cleaning products and it is, you know, there's everywhere, but freight while fragrance is put on labels as a single ingredient, it's a whole bunch of different ingredients that don't have to be listed on there. And there are a number of them that can be endocrine disrupting chemicals, including diethyl phthalate, DEP, is used in fragrance to help the scent last longer, but it is a phthalate. It's a type of pl- like plasticizing agent. Right. And these group of chemicals no- are known endocrine disruptors. So we, it's better to go either fragrance-free or essential oils, organic essential oils can be a nice alternative. That's what we use in the spot doctors, skin care products. We either have, we have some that are fragrance free and then some that we use uh, just organic essential oils as a natural fragrance. And it's just, it's just such a better alternative. The good news is there are a lot of safer, natural alternatives. And also things like essential oils, not only do they not have the downside of the endocrine disrupting chemicals and synthetic fragrance, but they also have upsides. Like they can help elevate your mood. And how fantastic is that when you're talking about (laughs) a self-care ritual is like, you're giving your mood a little boost while you're, (laughs) while you're putting your skincare products on. (laughs) I love essential oils. They're so good. And so other ones to be aware of, and I think you briefly mentioned parabens. Mm -hmm. Parabens are, they've been taken out of a lot of products, but unfortunately they're still in some, some products, even some that are called natural. So you'll see paraben at the end of the word. It is a estrogen mimicking chemical. And so it has been detected in breast tumor tissue. And so that's definitely another one we want to avoid. Oxybenzone is another example of a chemical sunscreen ingredient. And I know people use sunscreen to to protect the skin from sun damage and they're trying to do a good thing, but yet getting exposed to ingredients like this, which again are, are endocrine disrupting chemicals. And so you can use natural alternatives, mineral-based sunscreens like zinc oxide is a nice alternative using um, sunscreens with, you know, with that instead. And uh, I mean, those are some of the top ones I could go on and on. And I have them in both of my books. I list out right. some of the top ones to, to um, avoid so many products and that is petroleum byproducts. So like mineral oil, petrolatum, these, um, these are made, so they're made from petroleum, which petroleum is also where gasoline comes from. And so there are concerns about impurities in it, but also, and while a lot of companies use it because it's cheap and because it gives that, like, you know, it gives you that glowy look, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not actually, it could contain impurities and it's not actually contributing to the health of your skin. Your skincare products can actually contribute to the health of your skin. They can help that natural barrier function. And so oils like plant-based oils are going to provide the nutrients that your skin needs and without the possible harmful, you know, effects. Yeah, for sure. So, okay. In your, in your new book, you talk about four key factors So what, what are those? Yeah. So in natural beauty reset, I talk about food movement, mindset, and skincare. And these are really what helps build a healthy foundation for our bodies, for our skin, for our hormones. And the thing about these things though, is that they change based upon the seasons. Our needs change based upon the seasons. So Um, For example, food, our food changes with the seasons. If we eat foods in season, they are not only more flavorful, but they're also more nutrient rich. They can also help contribute to a healthy gut microbiome when we get fresher um, foods and um, more nutrient rich foods, it can help our gut health. And, um, and, And even in places where, 
you know, like in, in California or Arizona, where we feel like there aren't really distinct seasons, there's still a change in the length of sunlight that we get, how close the sun is to us. And that does impact our, it impacts our hormones, it impacts our mood, motivation, and nutrients available in the foods that are around us. And so that's why I make recommendations for these four different areas for food, movement, mindset, and skincare. Yeah, yes. I love that. Can, so speaking of skincare, can you tell us about your skincare line? Yeah, so my skincare line is, I, I created it because I wanted something for my patients that was truly natural, that mm -hmm. did not have the toxic ingredients in it, but also had ingredients and formulas that helped improve the skin microbiome, that helps support healthy skin. So a lot of skincare products out there have a pH that's too high for the skin. Our skin has mild acidity to it. So we need skincare products that support support that. Mm -hmm. And also natural actives that support the, the natural oils in our skin, antiox providing antioxidants and other nutrients that our skin needs to keep that skin barrier function working the way it's supposed to. So my signature system is a four-step system. And then we have a cleanser, antioxidant serum, moisturizer and, and a, a glow boost, which is our plant-based oil blend. And so it's, you know, I, I just, I wanted it to be simple, yeah. but comprehensive at the same time. And so I, you know, it's, it's just been fantastic seeing the results with people. Awesome. And for you guys who are not watching this on YouTube, you need to, because she's Dr. beautiful, Trevor has the most beautiful skin <laughs> ever. Uh, you. <laughs> it's a work in honey. It's the lighting. <laughs> no, it's, not. it's the skincare products. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. where, why don't you tell us like where people can get your book, tell us about your program, you know, anything like that. Yeah. So people can find me at the spa doctor.com T H E S P A D R.com. And you can find my new book, natural beauty reset, wherever books are sold and it's, um, Amazon bestseller. And so you can get it there elsewhere. And, um, yeah, you, uh, you can also check out the woman's doctor podcast, my podcast, and I'm on social media. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it so much. Um, I'm looking forward to getting your skincare. I haven't tried it yet. Great. Great. I can't wait to see what you think. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. And if you love this episode, please leave a review. It only takes a couple minutes and you can find out more about us on drbeckycampbell.com. And you can follow us over at Instagram on at Health Babes Podcast, at Dr. Becky Campbell, and at Dr. Crystal Hone. Have an amazing day. Mm -hmm.